Well, hello everybody. This is your divine appointment. Good to be back again to see you. I am just relaxing. We're having another gloomy afternoon. I always seem to hit the time when we're going to have a rainstorm. So usually around 4.30, 5 o'clock. Anyway, I am having a little bit of um, tea and hope you can just sit for a few minutes and enjoy a cup of coffee or a little bit of tea and take your time and just enjoy these next few minutes with me, okay? I love my jasmine tea in the afternoon. It always gives me a little lift. I love it. I know you all have favorite things you like to do. Um, my favorite thing to do is open up things I get in the mail. <clears throat> I just want to thank, um, thank you so much, Vicki. You were such a dream. Um, one of my followers sent me this beautiful, it's The Chosen, and it's the series of uh, movies, and they're all Christian movies about Jesus. And um, they've been on, uh, been on programs that showing them on television. I've been getting them on Roku, <clears throat> and we we listen to Roku a lot. We like um, all the different viewing that comes from that. And um, so I just want to take this time to thank you so much, Vicky, and for your lovely card that you sent in the mail. Um, and um, these things mean a lot to me. And she says, I know you will enjoy this as much as I have. I hope you and Doug are well and enjoying life. Uh, forever looking forward and upward for our Savior. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> we really are. God bless you. Thank you so much. And especially, um, Becky, for your monthly blessing into my ministry. Thank you. You have no idea how much it means to me to receive this validation um, in the mail every month. You are so faithful. Um, you are being blessed by this ministry. <clears throat> and I just thank you. I just thank you so much. And um, I also received another card from another sweet um, follower and uh, she sends her just a little sweet little note and um, just a little hello, but I just love that little bird with the long legs. <laughs> and um, thank you so, so much. I appreciate Evelyn so much. And um, if you can just take a few minutes and relax, I just want to share a few things today that have been on my heart, that the Lord has laid upon my heart to share about today. Um, you know, we, we, we hear so much um, about all the things that are going on. <clears throat> and uh, many, many people are receiving words from the Lord um, if prophecy. And, of course, we know those that are going around just recently um, have been uh, quite um, uh, frightening to a lot of people. And um, let me just say this that we really do need to stay focused on the lord and not um, focusing on the news or all the negativity that's going on in the airways it just really is a downer it really really is and it's so negative and um what we really need to do is keep the things that we can um that we just to stay on top of things so that we can pray so that we can we can just um, spend that time in prayer um, for that situation that we're um, going through and I've had many many years of receiving words from the Lord and um, <clears throat> some of them I had to keep to myself and um, because they might have been too or just shared with people um, that I knew had a strong walk in the Lord. And that way, I didn't have to worry about um, them taking it the wrong way. And, um, there we go. And, and scaring people and frightening people. And um, without concentrating more on the positive rather than the negative. Uh, I've noticed that with a lot of the words that have come forward, um, I've just lost my little 
place here. Oh, here it is. Um, that a lot of people spend uh, so much time on the word that they've received from the Lord, but very little time on the antidote, which is God's uh, way to remedy anything that we're going through in life, and that's prayer. Um, he gives us things to build, build us and strengthen us and test us in our walk with him. And um, some things are very current and they're right now because there's many times somebody's suffering and they're going through something and naturally if you receive a word from the Lord for that situation, you want to get that information of that person so that they can be comforted. And those are th that's the way it works in the, in the spiritual. We just have to uh, uh, keep in mind that some words are for the future and some words are coming uh, down maybe five years, maybe two years or maybe tomorrow, but we're not sure. So we just have to remember to always pray, no matter what the Lord gives to us. So these, these words that we're hearing from so many people, um, and even I've had things that the Lord has shared with me over the years, and I've shared them. Even on these past videos recently, I've shared some of these things. But remember, they're not something that we should be scared to death and frightened, losing sleep over. Um, running to and fro and just um, scared and worried. Well, you need to prepare because um, it's just important that we have um, a preparation for the days and the hours that we're living in. It's just one of those things. Look how coronavirus came upon us. We have an enemy, and that enemy just wants to continue uh, robbing, stealing, and destroying. That's his job. So um, in China, this whole thing that was um, contrived, it was put together for the benefit of cursing the whole world with this coronavirus. And no, it's not enjoyable, it's not fun, the lockdown has not been enjoyable. Um, I don't believe all of it is, we're not getting all the facts. This, now this is my opinion. <clears throat> I believe in my heart that we're not getting all the facts and it is not as dangerous, although I know many people have died from it. Um, but I do also believe that they were in a compromised position, some of them, most of them. And a lot of them also that are in the figures that have been counted, have been counted just because they came in the hospital and they were marked with coronavirus immediately. Um, there's been testimony of much of that going on. So much that we really can't look at those figures as being deaths from coronavirus. We just cannot do that. We've got to look at the whole truth. And getting back to the word about the things that go on in the spiritual life that we lead in Christ, um, he's, we're going through a testing in our life because we are in latter days. Now, when I say latter days, it seems like we're going to be leaving here very soon. But, you know, we've gone through a lot of things. And, you know, if, if anybody has gone through a, a war like the First World War that we had in this country and the Civil War, the First World War, and then the Second um, it was horrible. People died. People gave their life up for their country. They gave their sons and uh, daughters and um, family members um, to the cause of supporting our country and keeping our country safe. In the same way now, we are being tested in this situation. <clears throat> There's a lot of things going on all the time. We're hearing war, rumors of war, all the things it says in Matthew 24. We're hearing all those things, but we've got to remember that God is a God of prayer, and he taught us this. And um, I remember that in Moses, when he was taking um, the Hebrew children across the land and, <clears throat> excuse me, over the Red Sea, what did he say? He said, stand back and watch the salvation of your Lord. He says in Exodus 14, 13, it says, But Moses told the people, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. This is what we need to hear over and over. I can't get this over to you enough. Do not be afraid. Let me say this. If we spend time in prayer, we will not be afraid. Because the presence of God 
will fill us to overflowing. This is the way God operates. He's a good God. And he's not doing this to us. It's the evil all around us and the darkness in our land. And a lot of sin has taken place in our country. We've heard this over and over. So we are going through some testing to see who is going to be separated, who are God's people, and who are not. And also tested to see whether or not you will say, I'm done with my life. I'm finished with the old life, and I want to live for Christ. This world is just not worth it. Too many things are happening, and it's real. And maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've been sick. Maybe you've had uh, no people that have coronavirus. Maybe you've just been going through all this, and you're saying, I need to get my life right with God. Well, that's kind of like what's going on all over right now. And we have the wonderful part about this is that I notice that people are starting to turn their hearts toward the Lord. And isn't that beautiful? I'm so thankful for that. I am so thankful for that. Um, turn your eyes toward Jesus. Look full in his beautiful face. And the things of this world will grow faintly dim in the eyes of his glory and grace. You see, as we turn our eyes towards Jesus, everything disappears. But if we're spending more time listening to news and filling ourselves up with all this negativity, we're going to be just scared all the time. Okay? Now, I'm going to share this. Um, <clears throat> this is another little thought I had for you, too. Um, uh, there's another scripture that goes, you know, kind of like this. It's like, um, well, maybe I've got that written here. I think I do have that written here somewhere. Well, it goes on to say, I'm going to put this down for a minute and um, look at my notes. In Deuteronomy 8, 2, um, all the Israelites were going across in the end of the wilderness and they were just traveling and and all those years they were going through the wilderness there was multitudes of things that God provided for them he provided so much for them all the way but they were so whiny and they complained and they wanted this and they wanted that they were going through a lot of testing at that time but God provided for them everything they needed he brought food he brought water Moses was their leader and this was an amazing time, a time of miracles, signs and wonders continually taking place. And that you can find in Deuteronomy 8, 2, that walked through the wilderness, but God was not pleased. And he had punished so many of them, and they were put to death, so many of them, that did not trust him or believe. And you read that account, it's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful story of walking through uh, the wilderness of God and those that made it and those that didn't. And just like we're going through, there's going to be some that are just not going to make it. They're going to be in doubt and unbelief and they're going to be in fear all the time. And it's not going to be an easy walk for them because they're not on the narrow road of the Lord. They're on that road that is just so wide and so full of destruction. And the Word of God says, wide is the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life in Christ. Okay? And another area was in Matthew 8, 23, where the Lord actually rebuked the sea, and that's what I was just sharing. All these Hebrew children were coming across after all these miracles and signs and wonders that um, happened when Moses was denying the things that Moses was asking him to do and to release the Hebrew children, to re release God's children. Let my children go. And um, all these things took place, amazing things. And <clears throat> he finally got to the Red Sea and he rebuked, he rebuked all the things that were coming against them. They had nowhere else to run, okay? And he stood up against all that was coming against him. All of the Pharaoh and all of his warriors were coming against him. What did he say? He said, stand back and watch the salvation of the Lord. You know, we've got to really realize how important it is to trust God and to pray and to seek him. And a lot of times these things that we're hearing, and we're hearing a lot of things, um, we should take them lightly. We should listen to them. But remember, um, God is with us 
and who could be against us if God is with us? And I think there's even one more. There was one more I wanted to share with you real quick, and that was Elijah. This is really good. Um, this is in uh, 2 Kings 6.16. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. So he asked Elijah, Oh, my master, what will we do? Okay. And um, he said, Do not be afraid, Elijah answered. For those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And he went out and he said, on verse 19 he says and Elijah prayed O Lord please open the eyes that they may see and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah and then the same way we pray when things are happening in our life we go to the Lord and we just say, Lord, I come against all these attacks against our president. I come against all these people that are attacking him in all this, this uh, constant, 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 constant fiery attacks of the enemy that are coming against our president, which is taking away from our country, taking away from the things that we need to be, he needs to be doing, to, and he's still doing it. He's still doing all these things, but yet all these attacks are coming against him. So there are multitudes. I heard somebody say today there is more than 60,000, just in one ministry, 60,000 people are praying and believing and trusting God and coming against the enemy, coming against all the things that are coming up against our president now, uh, coming closer and closer to election time. And we live in Florida, and they're saying there's going to be another massive storm. We have to suffer through again because they're contriving the weather. They're playing with the weather. And if you'll remember, I don't know if some of you probably won't remember, but we do here, that there was a major storm. There was like three right in a row. And one of them was Michael. I can't remember. There's too many names. But that one was horrific. And then there was one that covered the whole state of Florida. Well, this happens to be a very conservative state. And it's a very important state. Um, but we get attacked. And there's going to be another attack against us. But do you know, we're going to come against that attack. And that's what you need to be doing in general for your lives, for your children, for your family, against coronavirus, against all these attacks that are coming against our president coming against all the evil that we're hearing about through a lot of prophecies that we're we're hearing and we just come against them we pray and how we pray is God we just come against all these things and I'm just gonna pray with you right now father in Jesus name I believe in your word and I also believe father that greater is in, is he that is in me than he that is in the world pray along with me he that is he, greater is he who is in you and I than he that is in this world, this darkened world that we're living in. Greater is he that lives in me and you. And Father, I come against, I take the authority that we have been given through Jesus Christ. Through the name of Jesus Christ, we have authority. We have authority, excuse me, authority in the name of Jesus. We have been given that authority because of what he did at the cross. The blood of Jesus is against all evil. So we plead the blood of Jesus against all these things that are coming against all of God's people, all of the people that believe on your name. We come against all of these evil things that are all being contrived and all being maneuvered and all being worked behind closed doors and behind dark curtains and all these evil prayers and occultic things that are going on and taking place that would put fear in God's people, that would frighten God's people. In Jesus' name, I bind and I command these things to be loosed in Jesus' name off of God's people. And I break every chain in every way that it is binding our president and all the people, the good people that are working toward all the good things that we have need of in our country, in our land, all the things that need to be done. And I come against all the evil, I come against all the darkness, all the plans of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ. For no weapons formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus against all these evil ones that are coming against our government, our land, our, our precious patriotic men and women of God and children, and our president as well in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray now, Lord, that you would send your angels, just as you did for Elijah, continually surrounding us with goodness and your grace and toward the battles that are going on right now as we pray against all these things that are taking place. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Now, every time you hear a bad report, whose report you're going to believe? You believe the report of the Lord. It's an old saying, an old song from many years ago, but it's true. Whose report you're going to believe? When I go to the doctor, I don't believe the report of the doctor. I believe for healing in my body. I believe for healing. I believe for restoration. And every time I have prayed that prayer, I've been healed. God has worked with me. He'll work with you. But you've got to trust in the Word of God. You've got to believe the words of God. And you've got to know who lives within you. The greater one lives in you than he that lives in the world. So pray believing and trusting. Pray believing and trusting. You know, when they were on that boat, I believe that was um, Matthew 8.23. When they were on that boat and they were fishing, and all of a sudden that storm rose up, he rebuked that storm. But the Lord said to them, Ye of little faith, ye of little faith. And I'm going to say this to you, ye of little faith, those that are getting into fear. Do not allow yourself to get into this fear. Be strong and be courageous. Neither tremble or be afraid. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go, as long as you're praying, believing, and trusting in his words of faith. Believe in his word. Believe in the scriptures. Believe. Believe, and you will receive. You will receive, and we will all reap what we sow. We will all reap. If we're reaping, if we're sowing fear, if we're walking in fear constantly and worried and constantly looking at all the bad things that are going on, you know, all these things are going to pass. We're going to be going through a test. Where will you be in this test in your life? I want to see you. I want to see you on my side, walking that narrow road, believing and trusting in God in every area of your life, knowing that he's going to intervene for us. You know, he's never failed, my husband and I, in all the years. We've been walking over 40 years with the Lord. He's never let us down yet. He has never let us down. And I'm speaking that into your life right now. He will never let you down. He will never leave you or forsake you. Those that are against you are smaller, much smaller amount than those that are with you in that mountain that mountain of angels that are surrounding you, just like in the days of Elisha. I pray right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that you do open the eyes of your children, that they would see the angelic angels surrounding them wherever they go and keeping our world together as we pray, believe, and trust in the Almighty God we serve. We praise you and thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you today. I pray that you have a beautiful rest of your week and weekend. I will see you real soon. God bless you. Remember, stay in faith. Don't get in fear and trust in God. He's getting us through all these things, and we are all being tested. But greater is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world. See you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.